beautifuls, this is Aroma here, and welcome back to Serendip Ser Serendipity of Eons. I will officially get that correct someday. But we are playing the demo version, and we are now to down to number three, Sinji Hirayama. Let's see, it's, it's his little thingy. He's 21. He likes guitars, visual key. He dislikes conflict and tough go. We are so relatable. I, I do not like conflict or tofu. It's cool. Since he's so chill and friendly, most people don't realize he's quite emotionally distant. It's okay. Don't worry about it. That is his little... Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, thank you. That's the thing. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I look up at the men around me. My eyes meet that of the guy with the strange purple and red hair. I, he calmly stares back at me. It's as if he knows so much that I don't. I get such a peaceful feeling looking at him that I automatically whisper his name. Shinji. Oddly enough, he looks surprised. Me? I nod. There's something comforting about him, more so than the other guys. Sho seems kind of unreliable, and Tetsuya definitely seems irritable. I think Shinji would be patient with me. A good choice. Shinji will definitely take care of you. Yeah, you made the best choice, I think. Shinji is great at helping people. I don't know how much you can rely on him, but at least he knows what he's doing. Quite, quite a, compl co a compliment coming from you, Tetsu. I thought he said quite a non-compliment. Shinji turns to me, seeming to examine me for a moment. I stare evenly back at him. Did he not want to be chosen? But then he seems to make up his mind. Okay, well, if you're sure then, cool. If you'll live close by, I'll go ahead and walk you home then. You look like you're about to collapse from exhaustion. Sounds great. I'm honestly so tired that I think I can hear my bed calling to me. I struggle to push myself up before a hand appears in front of me. I look up. Need help? I take Shinji's hand and he gently pulls me up. I still feel a little worn out though and it's ridiculous how shaky I am. Shinji gently puts an arm around my shoulders to act as if I'm stabilizing to act as stabilizing force for me. Although it's definitely embarrassing, I'm grateful. We slowly walk into the elevator. Shinji presses a button for us with one hand while holding on to me with the other. I glance up at Shinji and he seems to be thinking again. For my part, I just try to act like it's normal for a stranger to be so close to me. But he smells so nice. It reminds me of what wind white smell like. I find it so comforting that I end up relaxing. We step out of the elevator and make our way out of the building. I've been starting staring at the whip road in front of me, set sparkling by the sunset. We've been entirely silent the whole time. It, is, it isn't something I mind too much with Shinji for some reason, but my own mind is starting to go dark places. I decided to distract myself by striking up a conversation. Hey, you remember last week at business club? Yeah? Um, I kind of felt like you were staring at me a lot. And then you started to say something and left. It kind of freaked me out. What was that about? Oh, it's kind of tough to explain. But there was something about your aura that day. I was trying to figure it out. My aura? Shinji nods, but he doesn't say anything else. I really want to ask more, but then he starts talking. There's a lot of interesting classes you can sign up if you want to learn more about the supernatural world. Like Intro to the Unseen World. Professor Sapienti teaches that one. It might be kind of advanced for a newcomer, but you should be able to understand most of it. And if there's something you don't get, I'd be happy to explain. Also, there's a really good one that should help you with your powers called Control and Focus. While we're ta t talking, a car comes out of nowhere. It speeds towards us on the previously empty road. Suddenly, Shinji pushes me behind him. I hear the sound of tires churning up water, and I feel faint raindrops on my face. Ugh. It's then I realize that Shinji got hit with water from one of the many puddles. Oh, Shinji, you got splashed on, didn't you? You didn't have to do that, you know. Shinji sighs and closes his eyes for a moment before replying. It's fine. Don't worry about it. He smiles brightly down at me to reassure me. I can see that the water really drenched him, though. 
His wet hair clings to his face in some places and hangs dripping in others. In the dying rays of the sun, of the sun I can see beads of water glisten on his skin. I'm captivated by the unexpectedly beautiful sight for me. Still, I was just thinking that you've been through a lot recently. So the last thing you need is to be covered in dirty water. I look down, feeling grateful that someone seems to understand how I'm feeling. Thanks. And I meant more than just far for protecting me from the water. We finally arrived at my apartment building. Thanks for walking me home. I started to climb the, to climb the stairs, but Shinji's voice stops me. Hold up a sec. He takes a pen and piece of paper from his pocket and presses it against the building. He scribbles something on it and hands it to me. If you need to know anything or need some help, just let me know. On the slip of the paper is Shinji's complete contact information. Sorry, I have to run off so quick. I've got guitar practice and I'm running late for it. But if you start, like, start feeling like you're losing control, just remember to take deep breaths. That'll help you calm down. Anyway, sleep well. Shinji waves and walks off. I turn around and drag myself up the stairs into my apartment. I can't make any further than my favorite chair before I collapse. I reach out in my pocket and pull out the piece of paper Shinji gave me. In clean, pretty cursive writing, his full name stands out clearly to me. I slowly recount everything I know about him. He talks to himself. He's, he can see auras. He plays the guitar. Something about his presence feels comforting, but also like he's not quite there. I can't deny that there's something intriguing about him. Shinji Hiriyama 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 I whisper his name aloud before falling asleep where I sit. Shinji seems to be the ideal prince charming boy. Or at least that's how I feel. He's like the ideal prince charming. And then he's your happy-go-lucky guy. And then he's the mature older guy that we all want, but we can't get. And he's obviously the nerd, and he's obviously the cannon boy. <laughs> so next episode, we're actually gonna go with Tetsuya. Uh, let's 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 do a little sneak peek about what he is. He's 21. He likes saving money and cold water. Weather, not water. Same. The same. He's he'll he'll like cold water. He dislikes the sun and crowds. Rumor has it that Tsuya actually believes in life on other planets. Diligence is all I recognize. But you know what, Boo Boo? Your world's gonna be rocked. Because I'm coming in. We just don't know it. But we're gonna see him in the next episode. And then we have one final episode left with, I believe, the Cannon Boy. But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.